Welcome, welcome, curling fans. We are at the business end of the 2022 Curling Masters here in Champery. It is the quarter final session here on Saturday evening. I always say, if you're only going to watch one session of curling, go watch the quarterfinals because you will have four very well matched games going on all at once. And indeed, we have a tasty lineup for you this evening. We have Team Valtra Huskins from Netherlands. They've won this competition before in 2019, and they will be very keen to repeat that. They are the only team left in this competition who have won this competition before. And as you can see, they're playing young Team Rebota from Italy. Up and coming young team from Italy. We've seen them around in a few competitions this year and last year, and they'll be delighted to qualify for this playoff session here in Champery. So we will be saying hello to the teams in just a minute. There are four games out there. You can hear it's a busy session out there on Saturday evening here in Champery and our featured game, Team Valtra Huskins from Netherlands against Team Robota from Italy. My name is Lorna Rettig and I will be hosting us through our quarter final here. The winners here, they will qualify for semi-finals, that's tomorrow at 9 o'clock European. And the winners there, they will qualify for the grand final, that is at 12.30 European. So set your alarm clocks. The chat, as always, is open. If you want to say hi, if you want to tell us who you're cheering for, if you have any questions about the teams or about the game, everyone is welcome here in the Virtual Curling Club. Oh, 
It is Team Robota who start with last door. You can see that little hammer just behind the Italian skip's head. And these two teams did not meet in the, the group stage. We started off with three groups of five teams. Those groups of five, each team played everyone else. Each team played four games. And after that, the teams were ranked one to 15. And we now have the top eight. And Team Robota showing us exactly why they have earned their place here in this quarter final. to start as always by the Dutch boys they've really come into their own this Dutch team always play very aggressively always got lots of stones in play and they really started picking up wins once we had the the five rock freeze guard zone rule rather than the four really suiting their aggressive style the new rule but we're a full Olympic cycle into the five rock rule now. And I think all, all the teams starting to, to get to grips with it. So we shall say hello to the teams in just a minute. Well, I can tell you who else is out there on the ice. On sheet B, we have Team Eve Stalker winning all of their round robin games. And they are again playing Team Craig from Scotland. They already met in the round robin match, and it was Stalker's team who came out top on that one. So I'm sure they will be feeling confident going into that. Over on sheet C, we have it is Team Jungen, the fairly local team from Adelboden, and they are up against the Norwegians, Team Ramsfjell. Always tricky to get past the Norwegian teams, and Team Ramsfjell always in a solid outfit. Our third game out there this evening. We have Young Team Easily, another up and coming Swiss team. And they are playing also undefeated Team Niemann from Sweden. So that's the game just next door to us. Maybe see few feet going backwards and forwards there. But a fairly conservative start here in our featured game. Lovely double take out there from the Italians. Lorna's favourite Italian team, as you will surely know, viewer. As, uh, of course, Joel Return as his team. They are off in Canada at the moment. But I'm sure they will be delighted that there are another two teams here from Italy. Joel's team I think committed to, to this Olympic cycle, of course. The next Winter Olympics will be in Italy, up in Cortina. So you can already start planning for that viewer. But these two younger teams from Italy having a bright start here in the men's tour. And this first end, the Italians with last stone. What do you think, viewer? I think this has a blank end written all over it. That can be settle the settle the nerves a little bit. As we said, Kluskin's team in a slightly different constellation, but they've won this competition before, three years ago in 2019. New territory for the young Italians and a nice simple first end here. Ooh, that was almost a bit too simple. A nice straightforward first end here. That could be nice for the young Italians to just settle the nerves. So the familiar figure of Jaap van Dorp for Netherlands. It was he that was skipping the team three years ago when they won this competition and 
they really try to maximize their lineup, this Netherlands team. Walter have been throwing fourth stones for a couple of years now. And Walter now doing skipping duty as well and yeah, working out pretty nicely for them. suspect yeah not really any decision to be made here we will play eight ends here here in Champery at the curling masters 2022 if it is level scores after eight ends we will play an extra end we shall have bonus curling we need a winner tonight to qualify for semi-final tomorrow and we shall be keeping an eye on the other scores as well so if you're following any of the teams in quarterfinals this evening just let us know and we can give real time updates and quite a big speak there from the Dutch front end and they'll be quite happy just to switch up the angle a little bit don't give the Italian an easy throw here we saw how much their previous stone curled in about this spot the Italians and I'm sure that was quite deliberate of the Dutch to say well let's put another stone over there maybe we can catch them out with a funny curl again You always want to force your opposition to play a shot. You don't want to give them anything easy. You don't want to give them just a, a gimme shot. You can see Hans Hoogman already warmed up. And their distinctive orange jackets, the orange. No trouble that time learning from the previous shot and Bato just has to be a little bit careful here you can see that little red just on the left of our screen close to the bumper there if Bato gets this angle wrong then before you know it that yellow might squirt sideways catch itself on the red and bounce back in again I'm sure Valter will be well aware of that. And you can see he's, he's taking the swinging hand, so he's playing the curl from the centre of the sheet out. So he, if anything, he will expect to, to over curl a bit, and that ought to keep that yellow stone well away from the red. So final shot of this first end for Dutch skip and fourth thrower. Valter Kuskens. We will say hi to all of the teams at the conclusion of this first end. There you go, no trouble at all. That yellow going exactly in the opposite direction from that dangerous red on the side. So a little bit of target practice for the Italians. As we said, perfect would have been that Netherlands would just leave them, leave them something to do. I imagine we shall see Senor Ribota throwing this straight through, but they will still be watching what happens with this stone. This is a, a learning opportunity. So he's not trying to remove anything. He has thrown it quite hard. But nothing to remove, but they're just going to have a look at that stone. How's that curling out there, away from the centre? Well, that was on purpose. And we shall come back to that in a minute. So, tactical decision there from the young Italians. They will retain hammer, they will retain last stone in the second end, but at the conclusion of end one, a blank end there, and it is 0-0 in our featured game.
And you can say thank you to our sponsors who made this very attractive competition. It's been going for quite a long time now, the Champlain Masters. And we always have a really strong roster. Thanks to the generosity of our sponsors. I think the teams really like to come here. And if you're anywhere near Champery, now that the risk for COVID is sufficiently low, if you would like to come and watch top class curling, you are welcome to do so. We are all allowed back at the club after a couple of years of more restrictions. So, Alexander Magan leading us off in the second end. It is still Team Robota from Italy who retain last stone into the second end. So it is Netherlands who will lead us off again. So lead thrower for Netherlands, that's Alexander Magan. Second thrower is Lohans Hoekman. Third thrower, Jaap van Dorp. Fourth and skip is Valtok Huskins. And we will shortly have another picture. Lead thrower from Italy. That is Vindiani Francesco. He'll be winding up his throwing arm as we as we watch. There he is. Vindiani Francesco, Francesco throwing lead shot for Italy. Second thrower is Fabrizio Gallo. Third thrower, Alberto Pimpini. Fourth and skip is Fabio Ribotta. Aggressive from the Italians in the second end. That's nice to see. They could absolutely just remove that Dutch stone. That would be very easy for them. But if you can imagine how the whole end would play out if Italy simply removes that Italian stone. Sorry, if Italy simply removes the Dutch stone and then the Dutch boys do the same back, they remove the Italian stone, etc., etc., for eight stones, and you will end up with a one point to Italy with your one last stone. And if we extrapolate that to eight ends, we shall end up with a score of four each. So if you want to win the game, you have to mix it up a bit, scoring just one with your one last stone. That is not going to win you games. And that's why we see the Italians, that yellow just at the top of our screen, that's why we see the Italians throwing up a guard, because all those stones out front, protected by free guard zone. And that means the Dutch cannot remove that yellow until five stones have been played. We can see there was a blank end next door as well. I fancy we shall have four pretty close games out there. That's why I always say the quarterfinals, it's really the session to watch. You're going to have four really close games out there. These are the top eight teams in the competition. The top eight still standing. But of course, if you're going to play the aggressive stuff, if you're going to put that guard out front, ooh, you have to get your next shot right. That's, mm, that's not a disaster for the Italians. Certainly that yellow's tucked in nicely behind, but as you can see, Valter indicating, unfortunately for Italy, that yellow has slipped behind T, and that means that Laurence Hookman immediately has a chance to just chase that yellow in and really neutralize it, take it out of play. He doesn't have to punch that yellow through. He just wants to follow that line, sit right on top of that yellow, and then that really takes that yellow out of play. And that's why it's very important to have good stone placement. But ooh, Lawrence has overthrown that one a bit. And Italy get away with a little mistake. If 
you're just joining us, we are in the second end here of our featured game. It is the Curling Masters here in Champoury, part of the World Curling Tour. Our featured game is Team Vox for Huskins. The Dutch boys winning this competition in 2019. And they are up against young Team Robota from Italy. I'm sure hoping to follow in the footsteps of Italian legends Team Joel Vaternas as well as Team over in Canada for the past few weeks. Well, that's not quite what the Italians needed there, actually. As you can see, that stone coming up a little bit short. And because of that overcurling, and you can see yeah, the path to that yellow at the back there, still really wide open. And Lohans Hookman will have a second chance to just chase that yellow in. This first one was coming in a bit chunky. And yeah, this one looks like it's got a bit of hot sauce on it as well. Hmm, indeed. So closer than the last one, but not a great second end there for a second thrower. Lohan Sukman letting the Italians away with a couple of misplaced shots there. They want to tidy that up the Netherlands if they want to qualify for semi-finals tomorrow. The winner of this game, they will play the winner of the game over on sheet B, and that is, contain yourselves everyone, the return of the most popular man in curling, it's Team Eve Stalker, and they have put a big two up on the board against Team Craig from Scotland. It was Team Stalker who came out the victor when those two teams met in the round robin, and Team Stalker putting up a big two in that first end. So those two winners, they will play each other tomorrow morning and the winners from our other featured, rather our other quarter final games. That's the winner of Team Ramsfjell, the Norwegians against Team Jungen from Adelboden here in Switzerland. The winner of that game, they will play the winner of Team Niemann against Team Easley. If you want to cheer for your team, or tell us who you're supporting, or if you have a question about curling or about this competition, everyone is welcome here in the Virtual Curling Club. Make sure, says Walter. This looks a bit happier. That's more like it. A couple of loose shots from both teams in the second end of our featured quarter final. In Champery, we play here in the arena. And yeah, you can get some surprise results. Just the air currents and temperature and so on can just be a little bit different in the arena compared with in the curling club. And yeah, it can lead to some surprise results sometimes just as the teams get used to the different ice conditions. What a big throw coming from Alberto Confini. Yeah, these reds out front not helping the Italians, and I think that's a wide shot. That red, still lying shot, but now the, the center of the ice is open. Netherlands then not necessarily expecting to score in this end. Uh, they would be stealing points because it's Netherlands who don't have last stone. Not necessarily expecting to do that, but what they want to do is keep the pressure on the Italian team. They're very good at that, this Netherlands team. They're tactically very strong. 
They just want to put a second red in there, trying to make sure that a double takeout is difficult for the Italians. And that's exactly what they've done. So that's actually one of those shots that you do want it going beyond T. You can see now, because those guards are out front on the left of our screen, up above the rings there. There we are, that's a nice view. No double takeout available. Now, if that red had landed just ahead of T, then there would be a double opportunity. So this is smart play from Netherlands. Just keep red stones in play, force the Italians to do something about that. And then Italy not really having the chance to build any stones to build up points. And a good result for Netherlands in this end. It would be first mention of one of our favourite tactical discussions, a score of minus one for Netherlands in this second end. That would be a good result. That would mean that they have forced Italy to only one point. They've forced Italy to give up last stone, all important last stone, forcing Italy to give that up, but only losing one point. And if they're constantly putting those reds in good places, not leaving a double takeout for Italy, they are on track to meet that objective. And Walter. Well, I'm not, actually, I'm not going to say anything until he's thrown. I don't want to curse the poor man. But no score either. We had a blank end here in our featured quarter final. Kriskins against Ribota, Netherlands against Italy, and there was blank ends all round except for Timmy Stocker. And I know the, the Stocker army have been, must have been saving themselves up for quite a few weeks now. So hopefully we shall get to see that team in the semi-final. And just exactly the same there from Netherlands again. You can see no double takeout available because of those guards out front. Yeah, that's a nice view. You can see that red really tucked in behind those yellows. There's no double takeout available. I mean, if your life depended on it, perhaps you could raise that yellow, that sort of raised double takeout, but yeah, it's only the second end, so no need for Italy to play any circus shots yet. But yeah, they're now discussing, okay, what should we be doing? They can do the same again, as we just saw. They could simply remove that open red, not let too many reds build up. Well, I think I quite liked their first idea maybe a bit better. They were talking about maybe swinging a stone in behind all those guards and just sitting on top of that red. So on the right side of our screen there, I'm sort of corner freezing that red because at the moment, Italy, are they're going to have to score one anyway. They're going to be forced to score one at the moment. And this is a very precise shot they're talking about. If they roll even few centimetres too far, then we're going to see Netherlands do the same, but a brave call from Italy. They want to remove that red and roll to the right of our screen. They want to roll far enough that they get it a bit hidden, but not far enough that that red is still short. So a big call here from Fabio Rebota. And controlled weight, not a huge weight here. They need this yellow to hang around. They don't want it to squirt off out the side. And that has overrolled a bit. So it has found a potentially a useful spot, that yellow. If Walter is not accurate with his stone placement here. If he leaves the Italians a double takeout, the Italians could have a shot for for three points potentially. So big throw here from Walter. He wants to throw the same shot he just threw, and we always say that's the most difficult shot in curling. Is same again, please. So 
we now have two Italian Yellowstones just hanging around to put a bit of pressure on Walter's last throw here. Nice look. Arch Vider, just make sure. And he has overthrown this. Oh, that just held on. I thought that was going to slip on a little bit further. So, few breathe a sigh of relief if you're Netherlands fans. You can see one, two reds, no double takeout available. And indeed, the Italians forced now to score one point against those two reds. So, that is a job well done for Netherlands. Fabio Robota then looking for fully eight foot, the white circle there. Passes it over to his sweepers. You can see them constantly looking down at the stone, looking back up again. You may see them just timing the first part of the stone to predict how far it's going and no trouble there. That's a lovely stone. Really nice T-line practice throw for Fabio Robota. No trouble for him there. So well made shot. Never easy to draw against two opposition counters. But finally, yeah, you can see the orange there on the left of your screen. You're quite happy with how that result went. And at the end of two ends in our featured quarter final here, the score is Walter Ruskins of Netherlands, zero. Fabio Robota of Italy, one. If you're just joining us, we are starting the third end of our featured quarterfinal here at the Curling Masters in Chambéry, 2022 edition. It is quarterfinals evening. We have four really well-matched teams out there, or rather four well-matched games out there. Only one out of those eight teams has won this competition before. That is the Netherlands team in our featured game. They won this competition in 2019. They would love to do that again. And they have made a bright start, even though the score is 1-0 to the Italians. We would say that the Dutch boys forced Robota to score that one point. And now for the first time in the game, there we are, confirmation from Fabio putting up one point there for the Italians. That was a force from the Dutch. So they'll be happy with that. And for the first time in the game, it is the Netherlands team who has last stone. And let's see what they are going to do with it. As we said, this team, very happy to keep stones in play. They've always played very aggressively, this Netherlands team. And that is what wins you games these days. It is definitely handy to have your big hitters in the middle order, but finally, it's really those touch shots, the, the tee lines and the sneaking in behind guards. That's really what wins the games these days. So that aggressive style, keeping stones in play, guards out front, really suits this Netherlands team. And I'm sure they shall be feeling confident out there this evening. But the Italians, Maybe a little bit of a, a surprise qualifier. We've seen them in a few competitions before, but this is the first time we've seen them in the knockout stages. They won three out of their four games in the round robin. Very much earning their place in this quarter final. And I know that the Dutch boys, they will be taking this game very seriously. Team Robota 
certainly doesn't have as much experience as the Netherlands boys. They've been together many years now, the Dutch, but fully earning their place in this quarter final. And definitely a banana skin for the Netherlands. Call again there from Walter, so that's Alexander Magan. He's a long time alternate with this team, but we've seen him play in a couple of competitions already. We saw him also at the, the Baden Masters. So, all five of the guys in this team very versatile. So, yeah, nice throws from there from, from Alexander. See that again more often in this five rock three guard zone world now. You see much more. It's almost like the mixed doubles discipline. It becomes a more like a race to the centre because you have that extra stone typically out front. But that's a very nice reply from Fabrizio Gallo for the Italians there. And why is that a nice shot? Well, as you can see, that red, that's still in the forefoot, in the red circle. And the point of that stone from Italy, didn't want to try to get closer to the middle, not necessarily, but what they have done is really cut down that scoring area for the Netherlands, as we said. If you're only scoring one point with your one last stone, you don't win games by doing that. And what that lovely shot from Italy has done, that's really cut down that scoring area for Netherlands and it has really forced play to the centre as well. So Alexander threw a really nice corner guard with his first stone. But the Italians forcing play back to the centre now. Oh, I wonder if Laurence had too much dinner because he's coming out of bit too hot with his stones at the moment. That that one is hanging on, but as you can see, uh, immediately Fabio Robota indicating, let's just follow that one in. Red lying two then, but Lohan's just overthrowing his stones a little bit just now. And definitely space now for Fabrizio Gallo to put a yellow on top and really put that pressure back on Netherlands. Objectives for this third end are exactly the opposite of second end. This time, if the Italians can force Netherlands to score one, or if the Italians can even steal a point here. And what a shot that is from Fabrizio Gallo to put big pressure now back on Netherlands. If Netherlands want to score anything, Look at that, they're going to have to do something about that yellow. And two really fabulous throws from Fabrizio Gallo there. Putting all kinds of pressure on Netherlands. And Jaap van Dorp coming up for a look now. Everyone coming up for a look. So Netherlands not exactly played themselves into a pickle, but this is the risk. If you decide to call the opposition's bluff and use their guards in the centre, this is the risk that the scoring area gets very small very quickly. Now we know you have a choice of curling to watch this weekend. It is a busy time out there. There is the World Mixed Championship, that's in Aberdeen. And I can see Team Stuckey there over in Aberdeen saying hello in the chat. Oh, I hope you're enjoying all your iron brew over there in Aberdeen. And 
John's in the chat as well. Nice to see you, John. Thank you for your support and encouragement. And SP watching from Canada. Everyone welcome here in the virtual curling club. If you want to say hello, or if you want to cheer for your team, just let us know. That removes the immediate danger for Netherlands. That lovely shot from Fabrizio Gallo, now gone, but that's one of those shots that probably looks a bit better than it actually is, because as we can see, it gives the Italians the chance to do pretty much the same again and keep that pressure on Netherlands. As we thought, some tight scores going on out there. I'll come back to that, but... So, Alberto Pimpini not quite finding the pin, as Fabrizio Gallo did, but that's found a decent spot there at Yellowstone. You can see, not so easy. There we are, that's a nice view. The Netherlands they're going to have to come in on the clockwise handle. And if, if they get this wrong, exactly, if they get this wrong, that yellow is going straight back onto the red. No change in the scores in the other three games. Blank ends all round. So over on sheet B, it is still 2-0 to the most popular man in curling, Yves Stocker. It is 1-0 to Team Ramsfjell from Norway over Team Jungen. That's good stuff there from Jaap van Dorp, really careful stuff. And it is 1-0 in the neighbouring game. Team Daniel Neiman from Sweden over Jan Isley of Switzerland. So that's a really lovely shot there from Jaap van Dorp. You can see just that much gentler weight, not a huge weight needed there. It was important to move that yellow, but it was just as important to find a good spot with that red, and hasn't he found a good spot with that red? Pretty difficult now for Italy to move that red. It just curled enough to find the inside of that stone and rolled a little bit in behind cover. So, golly viewer, as you know, I'm often teasing Team Hurtins for being terribly chatty, and it looks like they've run into quite a chatty team with these young Italians. So, don't go anywhere, viewer. Maybe pour yourself a second glass of wine. We could be in for a long one. There are no clocks here at the, the tour level. At the Pacifics or Europeans or so, up to World Championships and Olympics, they do have time clocks. And yeah, there, there's no particular advantage to playing slowly, quite honestly. I think it disturbs your rhythm a bit. But still, it's a, a resourcing issue. You need quite a lot of volunteers to run time clocks. That's why we typically don't have time clocks at the tour level, and teams are encouraged to get on with it, please. And gosh, what a lovely stone from Alberto Pimpini. A couple of loose shots at the start of this game, but really tidying up now, both teams. Much tighter with their throws there, and a real nice double take out there from Alberto Pimpini, removing both of those dangerous reds ahead of T-line. And now that little red at the back, looking a lot more vulnerable.
two lovely throws from Yat Van Dorp. That's exactly where they wanted that red. You can see no double takeout available there. Gosh, I'm not even sure a single takeout is looking likely. Really nice stuff from the Dutch boys. Just perfectly weighted stone. A really intriguing third end building up here. Both teams managing to put a lot of pressure on each other. Looks like Fabio Robota is talking about playing something pretty similar there, just a little bit, maybe a metre or two only, more weight than Jat van Dorp. Again, just try and pop that red to the right of our screen. I don't think he can play much more weight than that. Otherwise, it's going to fly past everything. shot here for Fabio Robota. He's facing two reds. He does not have last stone. And no real possibility to remove these red stones. As we said, I think the best he can do at the moment is just punch that front red back a little bit. But dangerous stuff here for the Italians. That's great stuff from Fabio. Yeah, I don't think he could have done a lot better with that. The, that red was really tucked in behind those two center guards that we can see at the front of our screen. But that lovely placement of the previous stone from Yat van Dorp, forcing a slightly more dif uh, difficult angle there. And now Walter Huskins, he has a good view of that yellow. And this gamble from the Dutch boys paying off. Here was me saying they'd played themselves into a bit of a pickle, but that's not what they were thinking. They knew they were taking a risk and now, big chance for Walter Huskins to try to lock that door a bit and put a couple of points or maybe more on the scoreboard. First throw in this third end of our featured game in the Curling Masters in Champery. Again, looks like just that really nice, gentle, controlled weight from Walter. He just wanted it to curl a little touch, and that's perfect. That's lovely throw from Walter. Really nice judging from the sweepers. Nice call from Jaap van Dorp. Gold star all round. And now it is Italy who are in a pickle. They are lying one, two, three reds against. Yeah, that might be their only chance there, is to come around on the anti-clockwise sandal, as Alberto is signalling there. Come around the back of everything and just try to cut this down a little bit. That gamble for Netherlands. Again, you can still see on the left of our screen that very first throw from Alexander Magen. But then with Alexander's second throw, Walter deciding to call the Italians bluff and say, okay, I think we're going to chase to the center first. And that gamble currently looking like a good bet if you're a Netherlands fan. You can see Eduardo in the chat who seems to be cheering for Stefano. I'm not sure who that is. Seems to be an Italian fan. Ricardo will be looking for a real pressure clutch shot here from Fabio Robota. As I said, they well and truly earned their place in this knockout round in our quarter final. They won three out of their four round robin games. So they are clearly in winning e form out there. And we're going to need a real winning e stone here from Fabio Robota. 
The sweeper is on that right away. But we looks pretty good. Sweepers sweeping it for all they've got, but actually, yeah, the weight was not too bad, but I think it was always tight for line, and that could be a costly miss for the Italians. Those one, two, three reds. Definitely counting, and Walter has the whole forefoot there. Thank you, Yap. Just indicating exactly where he wants this last stone to land. Lohan's just coming to check the situation. I know I tease the, the Dutch boys, but sometimes they are a bit over communicative, but that's definitely a strength of this team that they really do communicate every stone. Everybody knows the objective. Last one of the third end in our quarter final. And really nice end from Netherlands. The Italians not doing an awful lot wrong, to be honest, but seven out of seven shots so far for Netherlands. And for Walter, should be a relatively straightforward shot for him. He just wants to sit in the forefoot clean, clean. Seems like the guys are happy with the weight, and that's a lovely throw from Walter. He has his own stone there to use as a, a break stone, as we would say in German, and that is one, two, three, four reds. And what an end from Netherlands, taking a gamble to play towards the centre. That doesn't always pay off. Sometimes you can get yourself into quite a pickle and end up only scoring just one or even losing one, but golly, huge smiles from them. and. Absolutely, they will be pleased with that end. Eight out of eight beautiful stones from Netherlands. And there you can see that score confirmed after three ends here in our featured quarter final at the Curling Master Champery, part of the World Curling Tour. In our featured game, Team Walter Huchens from Netherlands. A huge four on the board, and they lead Team Fabio Robota from Italy, four points to one. Features quarter final here. They will play the winner of the game over on sheet B. That is Eve Stalker's team, who, along with Daniel Neiman's team from Sweden, they are the only two who came through undefeated. And it is Stalker's team who have put another one, they stole a one. And it's Stalker's team who are 3 0 ahead of Team Craig from Scotland. Team Craig having a really nice season so far. Very consistent. They were just a few centimetres away from a quarter final in Baden. They have made the quarter finals here in Champagny. So definitely not an easy game for top of the table Eve Stalker's team. Undefeated Daniel Neiman's team. They are the sheet next door. And as you can see, very close stuff there as well. Two blank ends, but it is Neiman's team who are 1 0 ahead of Jan Easley's team. Jan Easley from Switzerland. And the winner of that game, Daniel Neiman against Jan Easley, they will play the winner of our fourth quarter final out there today. And that is Team Ramsfeld who are playing. Another Swiss team, Team Jungen from Adelboden Club. And Team Ramsfeld put another one on the board. Just steadily building a little bit of a cushion there. There you can see that in the background. Team Ramsfeld putting a one and then stealing a one. Okay. 
we're approaching the halfway of our quarterfinal here. We play eight ends. Even Champagny, if scores are tied after eight ends, we will play an extra end. We need a winner. Our four winners, they will play the semi-finals tomorrow at nine in the morning, European, nine o'clock a.m. And they will all want to get a good night's rest. Important for the young Italians then. New territory for them, qualifying for a quarter final place in a World Curling Tour event. Already strong, strong performance from them. They won three out of their four group games. Only losing, in fact, to Team Ramsfield on the sheet a couple of places along. So already having a real good weekend here, the young Italians, and key for them right now is to, it sounds a cliche, but it is nevertheless true, is to really put that third end behind them, really focus on trying to grab two points back here in this fourth end. If Robota's team could grab two points back here, that would make the score 4-3, and all of a sudden, it's a nice close game again, so key for Italy, don't panic. That was a, a tough end, but we're not even halfway. But as we also typically say, Again, if you're going to score more than one point with your one last stone, you need your opposition to make at least one mistake. If your opposition play eight stones out of eight, it's not possible for you to score more than one with your one last stone. And at the moment, Netherlands not making too many mistakes out there. That's a good shot from Fabrizio Gallo. He does clear out two of those dangerous reds. Oh, and this is typical Netherlands stuff. I am well known as the world's most boring tactician, and I would start taking off the guards. Just make sure that there are no stones out front for the young Italians to hide behind. But that's not how this team became champions, and they're sticking with the aggressive stuff, thank you. They already have a red in behind that centre guard, and they are now putting in a second red behind that centre guard. Lachlan Sukman again, just a little bit overthrowing this evening, but. I don't think that matters too much at this stage anymore because, yeah, exactly, the Italians, they can't let this build up anymore. The, there's no sense in Italy just following that stone from Lohans. Then they're just going to get locked in. The Italians really want to try to score two points here or a blank end would also be fine for Italy at this stage. If it's not looking likely to score multiple. Oh, that was so close to being a huge raised double takeout. Great effort from second thrower, Fabrizio Gallo. But advantage Netherlands here as we approach the halfway in our featured quarter final. 
they can afford to just keep things simple out there. And keeping things simple at the moment means no more yellows in the house. And oh gosh, for an own court. Yeah, Van Dorp finding a roll in again behind cover. And gosh, poor old Italy getting a bit battered out there at the moment. They need to weather this storm. Again, not panic. Keep their focus. Keep working towards what they need to do in this fourth end. We've still got plenty of space to swing a couple stones towards the centre there. As we said, the any we need a mistake from Netherlands if they're going to score more than one. Oh, you've got that the wrong way around, Italy. I said we need a mistake from Netherlands. And mm, unfortunately for Alberto Pimpini, he's kind of made everything worse. And yeah, the Dutch boys, they're going to lap that straight up, thank you. Oh dear, this doesn't look nice, does it, viewer? It's a whole bunch of Italian stones out front, which is what they need. Guards help Italy, they need to get some stones in behind, but it is all red Dutch stones in behind there at the moment. Looking for a bit of magic here, the Italians. They don't want to let this game run away from them. Really, very little chance to score two at the moment. So let's make sure we can at least score one point here, boys. We are only halfway, and even scoring one point here, that would make the score 4-2. And that's still definitely a game you can win from there, but if Kriskins, even if they just pick up one more point here, that would make the score 5-1, and that's quite a different way to go into half time. I think the Italian boys will be wise to make sure they can still get one point here. Don't try to be too clever anymore. And that certainly helped again. That's cleared out the front. Still quite a lot of stones lying around out front there, but definitely more space to the centre now for them. And both of those reds are now behind T-line. That gives Skip Fabio Robota, that gives them a bit more space to find a good spot with the last stone. Yeah, critical here really for me is that they really don't want to let Netherlands score anything this end. So even if that means you're going to give up last stone but only score one point, I think they need to do that rather than letting Netherlands get any further away in this game. Four quarter finalists on the ice who don't progress to semi finals, they will have a very nice prize of 1,900 Swiss francs to console themselves. And they don't need to get up early tomorrow morning either. And that will definitely help for competition expenses for the rest of the season. These teams these top teams becoming ever more professional in, in every sense of that word, also in the sense of just the, the time that they're putting in for practice, fitness, travel. So our four quarter finalists, they will get a nice prize of 1,900 Swiss francs. And 
heard a little bit maybe from Walter. And there could still be a light on the horizon here for Italy. They want at least one stone that they can use. Yeah, you can see that red stone there. Definitely still space behind it. But golly, you've got one crack at this, Fabio. If this stone doesn't sit where he needs it, then they could be looking at a real howler with this final throw. The other idea would be, again, to just simply keep hitting out that front. Make sure you've got as much of an open space as you can with your final shot. Make sure you can try to get one. Let's see. Again, the sweeper is constantly looking up. Now trying to encourage the stone to curl. Keep it moving, keep it moving. It's taken just a little redirection there. So that's cut it down to one red. But as I said, for me, I think a loss of one red point here so that makes it a very difficult game to catch up in the, the second half. And for that reason, I think I might have preferred to see the young Italians just try to remove a couple more guards rather than taking on that shot right now. Because poor old Fabio Ribotta, he is going to have a howler of a shot. I think we shall see Vato Fuskins lock this door. I'm not too sure what they're discussing. The nature of the discussion, at least, will be, OK, if we do this, what does Fabio Robota have left to play? And they will be trying to give Robota the most difficult stone they can. So that's definitely the nature of the discussion. And it looks like what they think is his most likely stone, that yellow, all the way out on the left of our screen. It is a clear path from that yellow, if Jaap van Dorp was not sitting in the way there, it would be an absolutely clear path to punch that yellow at an angle straight back onto the red. That's what's concerning them. Two ways to neutralise that. Either you remove the yellow yourself, or you could punch a second red towards the forefoot and try to lie two reds instead. I think that's what the discussion was about. And indeed, it looks like they're going for that open red on the left of the center line as we see it. They just want to play T line weight and they just want to punch that red backward so that even if Fabio Robota can make that big angled shot on the yellow, he will only ever be able to score one point. So again, the aggressive solution, boring Lorna, I would just have removed the yellow myself and forced Fabio Robota to draw against the red. And hmm, that one. Well, I said that I thought they were trying to punch that red back. That may not have been what they were trying to do. Maybe they were trying to block access to that yellow in the front ring there and make sure that this is now the only shot that Fabio Robota can realistically win this end with. So you can see them looking at that open yellow. They need to fire it back at exactly the right angle and try to get it to punch that red out the back. And if he gets it spot on, I think he has a chance at two here. So I hope you have your...
cosy slippers on here, viewers, because if he makes this, here is a shot that could knock your socks off. And for the sake of good curling, let's all cheer for Fabio Robota to make this lovely shot. Good luck, sir. It sounds like it's close. Oh, they needed just a wee bit more curl on that shot. Fine effort from Fabio Robota, very difficult stone. As you could see, you had to get exactly the right angle there. But that is another score of one to the Netherlands. Everybody's socks still on their feet then. And quite a difference that made. I, I think that may be a little bit naive tactically there from the Italians. I wonder if their coach, the legendary Claudio Pescia, who is who has been with Joba Turner's as team and has scuttled back across the Atlantic and is now helping the young Italian teams here instead. I wonder if you'll talk that through with them there. I think they made their own life a little bit difficult there. They, they took the risk. They decided to play the aggressive shot, but if you want to play the aggressive stuff, of course, you have to have tea weight in your pocket and that didn't work out for them. And instead of a, a score of even four points to two. Unfortunately, if you're an Italian fan, that's now a score of five points to one. So at the halfway then, in our featured quarter final at the Curling Master Champery, it is Vato Huskins of Netherlands five, Fabio Ribotta of Italy one. second half of our featured quarter final at the Curling Masters in Champery 2022 edition. It is the quarter final stage. We started with three groups of five teams. The top eight teams are still standing. Only one team out of those eight has ever won this competition before. And that would be the Orange in front of you, team Skins from Netherlands. They had a slightly different lineup back in 2019 when they won this competition. But three out of the four of them out on the ice again. And golly, they are keen to retake this trophy here in Champery. Young team Robota from Italy. New territory for them. This is their first time qualifying for knockout stage, quarterfinal stage in World Curling Tour. Already, congratulations to them. They also won three out of their four round robin games. But really being a little bit outthought and a little bit outplayed at the moment, the Netherlands boys, a lot more experience really than the young Italians. Alexander Magan having a delightful game so far. We don't have anyone working out the percentage play. Again, you need a lot of volunteers for timing and statistics and that sort of thing, but Alexander Magan, I'm not sure he's missed a shot yet. He's found really lovely weight out there. As you can see, the teams in the arena here in Champery. Most of our competitions in the curling club, and yeah, you can get some surprising results here in Champery. Just the air currents and the temperatures can be a little bit difficult. That can just change the ice conditions a little. And yeah, from time to time, you can get some surprising results in the arena. Most of the teams 
used to playing and used to practicing more in the curling club where it's oftentimes a hermetically sealed environment actually so the air current's very well controlled but you can see folks able to spectate here in the arena next to the ice and yeah you can just change the conditions a bit and a brave try from Lohans Hookman but we see the Italians putting that yellow back because that was the fifth stone and free guard zone not yet over and it is the Italians who are entitled to put that yellow back where they believe it was in the first place. So Lohans attempting a tick shot, which is pretty difficult if the stone is in the centre and I believe even a little bit harder when the stone is over on the, the corner of the sheet over there. And that stone just reaching the bumper and that means the Italians can put it back. So a little bit of much needed good luck for the Italians there. And now we really want to see them use that mistake from Netherlands. That's about the first mistake from Netherlands for about 18 stones or something. So let's use this Italy. Again, if we can get two on the board here, that would make the score 5-3. And suddenly, that's a game that we can definitely win from here. And hmm, that one pulling up really short. I'm wondering if that even maybe picked up or so. You can see that yellow it just floated over the line. That's not at all where the Italians were wanting it. Maybe it went over a patch of Velcro on the ice or something. Guard zone over. Lohan Hookman can safely remove any yellow guard he wants, and he does. Again, that might seem a bit counterintuitive. Those guards are currently helping Netherlands in the sense that it's Netherlands with a stone or two within the rings there, but Really, any stone in play currently, that's a stone that can help Italy. Netherlands' ideal situation is not many stones in play at all. Oh, oh. there's a, a handy little stone there. Look at that yellow right in the bottom left of our screen. That's just hanging on by its fingernails. And I wonder if that will become important later. But first things first, we do now see Walter removing that guard, or asking to remove that guard that's just over the hog line. Siobhan in the chat. She's a Team Kliskins fan. Killing it, Team Kliskins, they sure are. my mistake. Yeah, Van Dorp was removing that open yellow. And again, yeah, just to, as an encore, he's rolled himself in behind cover. I don't want to curse our young Italian friends, but gosh, Netherlands team looking in business-like mode, aren't they? Very important for the young Italians to keep their focus. You can really feel the, the atmosphere out there, no? That you can feel that the Dutch boy is very relaxed. They're playing beautifully, putting all the pressure onto the young Italians. And it's the Italians 
Must be a little bit wondering what to do against this orange onslaught. But they just need to stick to their task, the Italians. Uh, oh, oh, that's a happy little roll or uh, spin. That yellow just spinning itself into the end there. But again, not quite what the Italians were looking for. They just caught the edge of that yellow just in the middle there, the one just over the hog line. And that's not what they wanted from that stone. And the Italians not yet managing to build stones in this fifth end. Very precise stuff here from Netherlands. Oh, yeah, is there, is there an opportunity on the anti-clockwise handle? That clockwise handle. So clockwise handle on the left of our screen as we see it now. Is that getting, getting maybe a little bit blocked? Is it time to get to the center around the anti-clockwise handle? We are in the fifth end out of eight ends here in Champery. And I wonder, the Italians there are four points down here, and I wonder if it is now time for them to take risks. I think they maybe overplayed the risk in the fourth end, and it did cost them. Instead of getting points, they ended up giving away a point, and I wonder if now is the time to throw caution to the wind. And yeah, I think I like this shot, you know. I think this game was starting to get away from them a little bit already, and I think they need to switch it up now. But, oh dear, that's not working for them either. I do think that was the right call. Let's go around the anti-clockwise handle, the open handle. If they could have got that yellow in behind everything, that would have really set them up quite nicely, but now, Unfortunately for them, it is Walter Dedro Huskins with his first throw here in the fifth end, and he will be wanting to just block that path for Italy. So we anywhere ahead of T-line here for Walter. Line is important here. Anywhere ahead of T-line will block that path to the center. Path to the centre, already pretty much blocked on the other side of the ice on the clockwise handle. And Walter again really wanting to lock this door. I'm sure Walter's team, they're always extremely professional. I'm sure they won't quite be thinking of semi final tomorrow morning, but certainly if they can get this game, if they can win this game in seven ends instead of eight, then that's just a little bit longer of a rest. Oh no dear, Walter in, in pretty good form out there. Starting to feel a little bit like a game too far for the young Italians. The Netherlands really consistently stringing eight out of eight shots together. And the Italians not playing horribly at all, but unfortunately for them, every time they're not quite making a shot or making a half shot, then the Netherlands really punishing them for it. Uh, let's see what's going on on the other sheets while Fabio Ribotta, his first throw in this fifth end, really crucial that the Italians score something here in this fifth end. So 
We want a good throw here from you, Fabio. Can he get this nice hit and roll? I think he was indicating a double takeout even. Oh, that stone over curling and again I'm, hmm. I'm not sure that was quite the right shot. That could have been more of a, a last stone because unfortunately for Fabio, Walter is going to throw pretty much the same stone he just threw. He will throw it probably a little bit shorter or he might even freeze that stone he just threw, land one right on top of it. And golly, there will be no way in for Italy. So while Walter is winding up his throwing arm, let's see what's going on on the other sheets over on sheet B. The most popular man in curling, it is Eve Stocker's team and they are 5-2 ahead of Team Craig from Scotland. On sheet C, Team Ramsfjell from Norway having a real close game against Team Jungen from Club Adelboden in Switzerland. That is 2-1 to Team Ramsfjell, they are in their sixth end. Also undefeated, Team Niemann from Sweden, they are 3-1 ahead against Jan Isli. Another Swiss team in the neighbour sheet. And here in our featured game, oh gosh. Everything coming up orange at the moment. Or red. And, oh gosh, I'm not even sure how Fabio Rebota can get to the pin here. Again, eight out of eight shots for Netherlands. And look how much pressure on this final throw from Fabio Rebota. I think the best he can do actually may be to simply cut it down to one point here. I don't even know if there's space for him to outcount that red. The one that Walter threw with his first throw. Oh no. Oh dear. And that is another big score of four for the Dutch boys. One, two, three, four reds. And Goni, this game really getting away from the young Italians, unfortunately. Super performance from Fabio Robota's team. First time in the knockout round of World Curling Tour. And if you, were, if you played this young team at your club, they would be all over you. And that's simply to emphasize the, the quality that's at this level, that you cannot make more than one or two mistakes in a, almost in a game at this level. And gosh, we've seen a fine performance from, from Netherlands out there. All smiles, I'm not surprised. Alexander Magan there, throwing lead. I'm not sure he's played a wrong shot yet. We can go back through the stream and figure it out, but he must be close to 100% game here. And oh, that's a nice shot for a lead. We can see Alexander just throwing a big weight there. He has absolutely done his job for the past five ends, putting stones right on that center line, putting up guards, putting up stones in front of T-line, and on purpose now, Skip Valtorchuskin's asking Alexander to throw the stone straight through the back, so that's on purpose. That wasn't a miss throw from Alexander, and the reason that Valtor does that is, as we said, really any stone in play, that's a stone that Italy could use to help them, Either they could sneak a stone in behind or they could try to freeze a stone. And really, from here, we're in N6 out of eight. And actually, 
looking like the Italians realizing that this game may be beyond them. So a slightly unusual shot for a lead player at this end. Oh, sorry, at this stage. You don't see lead throwers throwing the hit very often. Well, Alexander with his, that's his first hit of the game and making it perfectly. He has all the shots in his pocket. And this may look like a slightly strange tactic for you viewer, but I think the Italians realizing that they really have been outplayed in this game. The Netherlands hardly putting a stone wrong. And the Italians just wanting to finish strong. So rather than getting into a big mess of stones, getting into a pickle again, the Italians may be saying to themselves, you know what, let's just finish strong. Let's just keep it clear. Give Fabio Robota an easy stone for his final throw in this competition. But really, I think there may be no way back for the young Italians. They need to be really proud of themselves that they have got this far in this competition. First time for them qualifying for quarterfinals knockouts in a World Curling Tour event, and that is a big deal. But indeed, I think this game too far away from them to come back now. You can see on the scoreboard there, a huge score of four in that third end. The Netherlands gambling a little bit and deciding to play towards the center first. And goodness me, did that gamble pay off for them. And again, I'm sure Bato Huskins and the Netherlands boys, they are always professional. They will be finishing this game off. They will still be focusing on every stone. They will still be concentrating on every throw, but looking very likely that we may have our first qualifiers for tomorrow morning's semi-finals. Semi-finals here in Champagny at nine o'clock tomorrow morning, European time. Some terrific breakfast curling for us viewers. And the winner of this game, the Netherlands boys, still just diligently playing stone after stone. The winner of this game, they will play the winner of Yves Stocker and James Craig over there on the far side. You can just see the scoreboard on the left of our screen there. And the other two quarterfinals, the winner of Team Ramsfield against Team Jungen. It is the Norwegians, Team Ramsfield, they are currently 2-1 ahead in the sixth end. And the fourth quarter final, it is Team Neiman, currently undefeated, the Swedes. They are playing Jan Easley from Solitun. And Easley's team putting up a good fight against unbeaten Neiman. There you are, they are on the next sheet to our featured game here. It is 3-2 to the Swedes in their seventh end, and the winners of those two games will play each other. Oh, I can see superfan Megan in the chat. Hello, Megan. Thank you for joining us today. We will be watching the semi-final and the final tomorrow all together semi-final at 9 o'clock in the morning European, the final at 12.30 European. And I don't care if it's nice weather of yours, we will have some good games for you. But, uh, an elegant way, I think, for the Italians to finish here, realizing that this game is beyond them. They've really put their heart into it, this competition. I really hope they're proud of themselves, this young Italian team. We saw them in a few competitions last season, in a couple of competitions already this season. 
definitely making progress here, but this an elegant way for them to finish, deciding, you know what, this game's beyond us. Let's make sure we score one point here. Let's give Fabio Robota, gosh, well, he's not had an easy shot all night, has he? Let's give Fabio Robota a nice straightforward shot with his final throw, finish strong. And nothing wrong with doing that. indeed these boys from the Netherlands this is the only team left in the competition who have won this tournament before they won back in 2019 and I wouldn't bet against seeing them at 12.30 tomorrow they are in decisive form out there Plenty of good stuff, though, for our young Italian friends to take away from this competition. They won three out of four of their round-robin games. And tough to come back when that big four went up on the board in that third end in this game. It is tough to come back from that at this level. So a brave display from the young Italian team. And as we can see, just persisting with this, let's just... Keep it clear. Let's give ourselves a chance to finish strong here. Let's give Fabio Robota, who's had, of course, some real howlers to have to try to play. Let's give him a chance to finish strong here. An elegant solution. An elegant finish to their competition for Team Robota. So that was this practice throw. Well, that put its brakes on a bit. That I thought that was coming in hot a bit there, but yeah, that put its brakes on. I'm sure Walter will have no trouble simply removing this yellow. He would like to leave this red lying around. Don't give Robota the same shot again. Force him to play to the final throw. Ooh, and look to your left, viewer. You can see a big score of two to Team Ramsfeld from Norway over Team Jungen. In that sixth end, that could be big, you know. That means that the Norwegians now 4 1 ahead of Team Jungen. The Swiss, with only two ends left to play, they're in their seventh end. They have taken a decisive step towards a semi-final place as well. And let's see. So Fabio Robota, gosh, he's faced an awful lot of granite this evening. A brave display from our young Italian friends. Let's finish this off strongly. And a call of clean, always nice to hear if you're a sweeper. That typically means line looking very nice. Just keep it clean, make sure no little specks of dust. And an elegant finish from the Italian team there. They will pick up a prize of 1,900 Swiss francs for their tremendous efforts this weekend. They now have a taste of qualifying for these knockout rounds. First time in the quarter final for them in a World Curling Tour competition. And we can say thank you to our sponsors there at the bottom left of your screen. That's what makes this always a very attractive competition for the big teams. So the Netherlands juggernaut continues. They are our first team to qualify for semi-finals tomorrow morning at nine o'clock European. Team Robota, their competition closes here in the quarter-final. First time in quarter-final for them. Congratulations to them, making good progress here in the World Curling Tour events. And I know they'll be disappointed with that game this evening, but 
I do hope that they reflect on a good weekend's work, winning three out of four of their round robin matches and then coming up against the only team left in the competition who have won this tournament before. So before we say good night, we shall just take a quick look at the other teams, the other games over there. Over on sheet B. The most popular man in curling, it is Eve Stalker's team. They also fancy a place in the semi-final. They are currently unbeaten and they are currently beating team James Craig from Scotland. Five points to two. On sheet C, as we said, team Ramsfield from Norway putting a big two on the board in sheet, um, on N6. That puts them 4-1 ahead of Team Jungen. Over on sheet D, that you can just see there on the right of our screen. It is also currently undefeated Team Niemann from Sweden. They are 3-2 ahead against Jan Easley. Another Swiss team. And here in our featured game, they are already finished. That was a fantastic display from Team Rattelkuskens from Netherlands. They hardly put a stone wrong and they finally overcame Team Fabio Robotta. A brave performance from the Italians. But finally, it is the Netherlands team who qualify for semi-final tomorrow with a wonderful score in this quarter-final here in the Champery of nine points to two. So do join us tomorrow, nine o'clock European in the morning for some terrific breakfast curling and then 12.30 tomorrow for the final here in Champery. Thank you for your company this evening. Bye for now.